So hello everyone, my name is Piotr Słowiński and welcome to the third part of this um, online workshop. And today we are going to continue with using MATCONT to study dynamical systems and model in, in, of, and modeling of biological systems. And uh, today we will like yeah, do a little bit of like uh, the same things as, as at the session that Krasi ran. So we will run simulations. We will talk about the phase plane, about stability and about the bifurcation diagrams. But our focus is going to be on multi-stability. So we are going to, to talk about situations where in your system you can have like a multiple outcomes that, that, can, that can happen. And these outcomes will depend on the, on the initial conditions. So one of the, one of the examples that uh, you quite often, quite often like, you know, it's easy to, to, to imagine, which is like, you know, multi-stable, as this are those examples of ambiguous images. And uh, here, like, you know, the, the bistability comes in the fact that your brain is switching from, from seeing like a one picture to, to, to a different, from one interpretation of the picture to a different interpretation. So like in the example of the, of the Necker cube, you will either see like, you know, being like, you know, sticking out of the plane or being like, you know, in, inside the plane. And with the, with the Rubin's vase, you, can, you will be switching between the two faces and the vase, two profiles and the, and the vase. And then you have the example of the Jan called woman. And it, as you are looking at it, at some point of time, your brain is switching between the old face and the, and the, and the young face. And uh, here it is like, you know, still being explored what are the exact mechanisms that are causing this. And it's not as clear example of a dynamical system. There are like, you know, different, different hypotheses that are actually trying to build the models that would be like, you know, truly multi-stable, but this is not, not explored as nice because brain is very, very complex and there is lots of element and lots of, and lots of things are, are taking part there. So we are actually going to talk today about the genetic toggle switches. And uh, this is uh, one of the examples where actually like, you know, very precise, uh, mathematical modeling and, and quite simple mathematical modeling actually allowed to make uh, gain quite a lot of understanding into what is going on in this in the systems. So in uh, genetic switches, in most of the cases, you have uh, you have like a two two genes that are like a coupled together, and in the most famous examples, like from this from this paper from 2002 those are two two genes that are repressing each other so as one is being produced the other one is being blocked and the same is happening with the with the other one and uh, you have like you know quite quite complex interplay between them and you can end up in the situation where depending on the on the exact state of the cell or where you were where, where, where the cell was exactly starting, either gene one is going to be expressed predominantly on the or the gene B. And as you can see, this is actually like you know, the system can be described by quite a, quite a simple set of equations. And there is quite a lot of experimental confirmation that this is actually like, you know what is going in this in the cells and this was possible because you can actually const, uh, build such build such uh, switches in a living cell by using different genetic techniques so you can like you know as like you know the proper quantitative modeling and combined with the experimentation you can make a model you can make predictions and then you can validate this predictions in experiment and check the validity of the model and check how far you can push the model assumptions to see how the things are how the things are working. And another thing that is going to be discussed uh, at the next lecture by Kyle is actually the role of the noise that that plays in actually like you know observing one state or the other state. 
and uh, and this is like you know as you will you will like you know see a different approach to to buy stability or multi stability when you're like uh, looking at the systems with noise but actually like you know if you if you read about this a little bit more you will see that to 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 big extent there is quite close mathematical connection in in both of these cases so Let's go to some practical example that we are going to look uh, at, uh, at today, at today's session that we will actually like, you know, model in exactly the same way as they've done in the paper, the mathematical part, we are not going to run the experiments. And this is going to be to be model that has been described in this, um, in this paper that you can, you can see the reference here at, at, at the top. And it's engineering of a genetic circuit with a regular, regulatable multi-stability. And in this experiment, they, they built cells that after, uh, that had like a three, three genes and after adding like um, the IPTG uh, substance, which is like some related to, uh, which is like some derivative of, of galactose, if I, if I remember it right, is um, the, the, the the cells as the as the concentration of the aptg grows the cells start to behave in two different in two different ways and in two uh, exclusive ways and this this behavior is just depending on the very pre, of on, of the very state of the cell in which in which uh, you are starting so as you increase the concentration of the iptg in your in your microfluidic chamber with multiple bacterial cells you first start that they start to glow in green and then as the concentration grows you start to observe that there are new uh, that there are also like you know some cells that are glowing in red and this is then uh, persists in, in time. So as you're starting in this experiment with a low concentration, you have only one state of the, of the cells. And then as you increase this concentration, you're observing two states. And this is actually going to be something that is, that is like, so you are moving from a state where you had one, one stable solution to, to a situation where like you have, you have like uh, the same cells, so the cells are not changed. It's only like, you know, this one parameter, which is the concentration of the substance that is being changed. And in our case, this concentration is going to be the, the parameter that we are going to be, to be exploring. So if we now look how it's actually being described. So this whole experiment then can be represented in a bit more like a um, cartoonish way in this network of three genes. So we have this fruit free to two, two genes that are like, you know, um, mutually repressing itself. And this is like the, this most classical toggle switch that you've seen in this, in this papers that, uh, that, 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 that started the whole, whole field of this artificial, artificial genetic circuits. But this, we, we, we are adding here additional, additional component that is um, allowing the expression and that, that is allowing expression of these two genes independence of adding this, this IPTG. And as you're adding this IPTG, then this uh, T7 RNP gene is switching on and then it allows to either like, you know, the HK, HKCI or, or CI to be expressed. And then this expression like, you know, can be observed as being uh, glowing in the in the red or or the the green. So to describe such a such a network just by using equations, we will we will we will like uh, yeah, it's 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 um, relatively simple. So if you would look if you would like to add the at the full um, at the full uh, derivation of the equations from the from the stoichiometric equations from the chemical reactions you can look at this link at the at the bottom here then you will see there like you know how they are doing this step by step in the same way as Kyle showing at the at the very first lecture for the for the brassolator as you're going from the concentration and from the uh, reaction rates to to equation like this we are now just going to like you know look at this equation and interpret the variables 
So the X1 is going to be our expression level of the HK, HKCI gene. The X2 is going to be the expression level of, of, of CI. Okay, I, uh, I can see that on the slide I confuse the colors, but one is green, one is, uh, one is red. So I hope it's not going to be too confusing. And then we have this transcriptional activation, which in this case, we are just going to treat as one of the parameters Z. And we can see here that at the end, some of the, of the products of this, of, this, uh, of this reactions are going to be removed. And then this expression is actually, actually being controlled by, by this term here. So this would be like, you know, the, 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 the just introdu introduction to our system. And, um, and now I would say it's, it's a good point to switch to, to MatCont. And everything that will be done in MatCont is then later on explained in step-by-step -step on, the, on the following slides. So do you have any questions at this, at this stage? If not, then let's go to MATLAB. And uh, in MATLAB, we are going to be in our MATCONT folder. And I'm going to just type MATCONT. And I will just arrange the windows a little bit so we can all see everything. And the first thing to to yeah, and then we start with a with a new system, and we can call it like a G switch genetic switch, or you can call it in any way that you like. Like you know, there are some couple of like, uh, of exceptions that MATLAB MATLAB doesn't like. So, like you know, you shouldn't be starting, for example, your name with a, with a digit at the beginning with a number at the beginning. So our coordinates are going to be like x1 and x2, and our parameters are going to be z, a1, a2, b1, b2, n1 and N2, just let's have a look here. Yeah, we have A1, Z, N2, B1, and the same in the, in the second equation. Now we are going to turn on the derivatives so the matcont can compute them for us. And now we type the equations. So X1 is equal a1 times z divided by 1 plus z plus x2 to the power n1. Then we have plus b1 minus mm, B1 minus X1. And yeah, and we can then, yeah, just like, you know, use this one to type the second one. X1 and two plus B2 minus x2 and just i want to show you like you know one thing what happens if you for example don't include all your all your parameters here when you are typing in equations then what is happening is just like the the matcont will tell you that something something happened that there is unrecognized function or variable z in your in your equations and it cannot it cannot uh, it cannot compute anything further so we just acknowledge this, we will add our Z here, and then we click OK, and now the computation will go on. So we don't have any more window, we now have our system G switch, and then the derivatives, and there is nothing, nothing in here. So um, 
Yeah, so we first just check. We choose our type initial point as point. And we take as an output the uh, and this time we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to take a, a 3D, 3D plot as our output. And uh, we will use it to observe like, you know, both our time evolution and our face plane. And here I said the I kept, so we first got like a warning here that we didn't have all of the variables defined here in the layout. So then I've set up, I've kept the first one uh, x1 at the at the value that it was like you know set by def default. I will just now type it to four. Then I set set the second axis to be time, and I will set it to one hundred. And then the third axis I'm going to set to be actually x2, and to have it at four as well. And I'm just going to click OK here. And now, as you can see here, we have like, you know, the, the plot with three axes. We have x2, x1, and we have t. And if we click this icon here, we can rotate this 3D plot. And if we go to, to x, z plane, then we are going to have our face plane, where we have the Peter, x2. Yeah? Sorry, Peter. Uh, so uh, they want the equations in the chat. Okay. That helps usually. Yeah. Mm. Is it easy for you to do it? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, system. Yeah. And somebody lost their layout box. Okay, so I will I will show how you okay. So now equations are in the chat. Yes. You just can copy and paste it. So if you if you lost your layout, you can just go to matcont. Yes. And you have layout, the layout yeah. here at the very top. Okay, great. Found. Thank great. you. So yeah. And if you have like, you know, questions like this, you can like, yeah, either like if it's more convenient for you to type in the chat, that's fine. But you can also like, you know, just ask them uh, via, yeah, unmute yourself and like, you know, tell me I lost my layout and I will like, you know, stop for a second and, uh, and, and, and explain how to, how to, how to do it. So here I'm selecting like a type point as, as before to start the simulations. And we are doing all this to, to really like, you know, to explore the behavior of this, of this model, to see what is happening there, how the model is behaving when we, when we set a different values of the parameters how we how it's behaving when we when we set these different values of the initial values of the of the expression levels so now the first thing that i will do here i will extend uh, our uh, our interval to 100 so we have some um, so the the simulations will run for 100 steps of the of the of the time and uh, now I'm going to set here some example values of the of the of the initial conditions so the, of the initial state. So it's x1 I will put to zero, x2 to two, and then for z I will set 0 0.05. For a1 I remember from the paper that 25 is fine for a1 and a2. For b1. I are going to put as well what they put in the paper as 0.2 and for B2 the same value and for N1 I will put 3 and for N2 I will put 3 as well. And once I've done it, I will go to compute 
and click forward. And in this way, we've seen that this that there is this curve that appeared here at the at the plot. So now if I if I go to our XZ plot, this is our X1 and X2, I can see that uh, yeah, so I, I can check that I've started at the point 02, 02, which is X1 has a value zero and X2 has a value two. And then it went to some point that is close to one and one. If I go to YZ, then I can see the time evolution that was happening here. So we started at the value of X2 that was equal to two, and then this value stabilized somewhere around one. So we see that as we are picking these different initial conditions, then our system is actually evolving in time. And what is missing, let's say, from the, from the phase plane plot on which we are, can see um, all the possible combination of these two variables. So we can see like, you know, the whole, whole plane of all the possible values of x1, x, x, x2. Is this is this time information, and we can only like you know infer this time information just by knowing where we started. So we can then pick up like you know a couple of of other as as before, like you know to see what is happening in the system. We can start at a different um, at a different initial values. For example, we'll pick up here uh, x two equals to four, and again compute forward. And we see that we started at four and we again went to the same value as in the, in the first instance. We can then put, uh, we can keep X2 at four and let's say set up X1 at two. And we see that as this is happening, we are like, you know, going to, to, the, same, to the same point. And if we look at the time, we can indeed see that that this is this is what is happening. So let's see what is going on if we start with x two x two somewhere somewhere down here. Let's say zero point five, and we see again that something that we that we converge to the to the same value. And if we look at our at our phase plane, we started at um, x one equal to two and then um, x2 equal to 0 0.5 and then we went up towards this point that is one by one so there is a, this close connection between the phase plane and the time evolution that you can really like you know appreciate if you look at this at this at the whole system in 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 3d and we can see here that there is this single point but to uh, really like Piotr, you know observe this sorry yeah? Piotr, interruption um there is a there is a, it doesn't really work. Uh, Fiona says she's not getting anything plotted. Maybe she's missed a step. Uh, so we can Shall check we... Fiona what is like, you know, what, in, what are the ranges in your, in your layout? This is like possible. Well, so one thing to check it, for example, is if you can go and go to Matcon feet range. Did any of yeah, that the, worked? I that so worked. That worked. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so this was like you know probably like you know maybe like you know, I went too too fast a little bit about these ranges here, so I set them to zero four, zero one hundred for time and zero four for for x two as well. And as I was saying, like, you know, you can see that, like, you know, you can explore this phase plane in this way. And we see that all these four points at which we started are converging to a single point. But to really see what is going on in this system, we would need to run more and more simulations like this. And if we would do this, we would eventually be able to see a picture like that. So here at home, I actually like a run this, uh, this, this simulations using the matcon from all these points at the, at the edge of this plane. And I can really see that all of them are actually like uh, converging to a single point. And if I plot it in 3D, then 
it looks like this. So we can kind of like, you know, see that there is this funnel, if you think about this ex two expression levels, that then all these points at, after a long time are just ending here at this single, single final state. And, uh, and this is like, you know, one way of, of looking of what is going on. And, uh, and just by looking at these different, different behaviors on the, on the face plates. So now let's increase our Z value to 0.1 and to effectively repeat the things that we've been doing before. So I'm setting here Z to 0.1. I'm going to go to matcont and just clear all these previous curves that you are seeing. And let's start with 2 and 0 0.5 because this is like, you know, as a good starting point, as, as a good initial condition as any other. And we see that like, yep, we, we computed something. And then if we, if we look at our face plane, we see that now this point converged to some other points. Okay, so let's explore. Let's see what is, what is actually going on here. So Let's start with four. Okay, it looks like we are going to the to the to the same point. So let's now go with x two being four and x one being zero point five, and we can see that now we are like you know going to a different point. So we haven't we we just changed this one z parameter which in this model is this concentration of the I, the, the, can be interpreted as the concentration of IGPT. And uh, as, we, as we've done it, we can see that in this, in this behavior of the system, if we start at, at one point of our face plane, at one combination of X1, X2, we are ending up in one, in, at one value. And if we, if, we, if we start at some other, then we are ending up at some other value. And we can like, you know, continue this, let's say put zero here and change X to, to three, to two, to one. Okay, yeah, that looks good. Let's check the same is happening for the other side. Yeah, and now let's see, let's, look at some very special values. So what if we start at zero, zero? And you can see that like, yeah, we've ended up at, at a third point. And let's check then, let's say what's happening at four, four. The gain. So we can see that if we start at some very special value of these initial conditions, they are ending up at, at a third point. And if we were just like, you know, looking randomly at, at exploring this face plane randomly, it would really, wouldn't be possible to really find such special points very easily. So again, like, you know, to, to think what is going on, I will now switch to the, to the, to the presentation. And this is what I, what I like, uh, yeah. This is what I, what I computed earlier. So I again started at all these points at these edges. And I found that I have like, you know, these two points. One has the high level of X2 and the other one has the low level at, of, of X2. And there is this point in the middle. And uh, this point in the middle is special in a sense that it's not really a stable steady state. So you can you can you you can get to this point just from some very by picking like you know these initial conditions very very precisely. But if you actually like you know then disturb this point a little bit, and I will show you how to see it in a second, you will see that you will quite quickly jump away from this point and end up either at the at the red or at the at the green stable plot. And you can see that. Like at this, at the, if you look, if you combine this time evolution and the phase plane again, you can see that practically all of this of this initial state, except at the states that have exactly the same value of x1, x and x2, will end up at the green and red point, and only like you know very very small amount of this of this of these initial conditions will end up at the point that is this um, 
uh, red square, uh, black square. So now we we we, we go back to the to the simulation, and we we have let's say last one time we will check where we are ending up with the uh, when we started the, at the diagonal. And you can see that we have this extra extra line here, and that it went up to this to this middle branch. So if we look in the in the time evolution, we have three solutions, and if we look at the at the at the phase plane, it looks like there is this really straight line that is separating our two our two uh, two, two other steady states, and we call them steady states because like you know after a long time. There is nothing happening there other than actually like you know having this very very precise precise values. So to help to visualize um, uh, what is going on, we are now actually going to explore one more function of the of the matcont, which is this plot properties. So you click the matcont here in this in this plotting window, and we go to the to the plot properties. And here. You can see that there's all these different curves that we are, I will just switch this to default so it looks exactly like in, in your computers. We can see that we have like, you know, these different curves and they have some properties here. And because I can check here what is the, at the matcont GUI window, I can check what is the curve type and I can see it's O. I will change, change this properties. So I will first change the color to black. And I will also add one more property, which is line width. And I will set it to be very thick. I will set it to four. So once I've set it this way, I'm just going to, to, to close it. And I will go to view results to pick up the last point that we had to have that the last point that we have at this at this curve. So I go to view results here at the at the control window. I pick up the last point. I can see that it has like a, some very very symmetric values that are close to 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 one. Uh, and Piotr, I click, yes, we have a request. Can you put? that text in chat yes because the details are too small okay yeah i guess is that yeah these these things that you add for the for the curve yeah mm. chat i will wait a second to yeah, for everybody thanks. to copy it And then we go to view results and we pick up the, the last point here. Select point. And then we can see that we have uh, these values appeared in our starter window. So I'll change here time to be zero. So I want to start at this point. And I will make a tiny, tiny small change. So you can, you can see here that I'm changing the last four to three. So if you would plot these two points, the one that had the four here and the three here, you would really like, you know, need to zoom in very, very closely to see that there is any difference between them. But if we just so slightly go of this, of this diagonal, of this, of this final point here, and we click now compute forward, you will see this black curve and this black curve at some point deviated and ended up at one of the solutions to which most of the most of uh, of our initial conditions data and this is like you know one of the indications 
that this is an unstable steady state. It's unstable because if you introduce any, any small disturbance to this state, it will, very, it will, it will it very quickly deviate from it and go to another, to another steady state in the system. And this is something that you can, you can like explore with the eigenvalues as Krasi was explaining at the, at the, at the previous, uh, previous lecture. So here I just wanted to give you like a little bit of intuition. What does it mean that something is really unstable in sense of this, of this numerical observations that we can, that we can do here in, in using simulations. So now just let's check, let's do the same experiment for one of this, of the stable steady states. P so Piotr, sorry I, for interrupting. No, no problem. I think it will be instructive if you change X1 a little bit to three and keep X2 to four and converge to the upper state. Okay, just I, will, demonstration. I will just change it here. Yes, as Krasi suggested, so you can see that we went with three and then we've changed it to four. And um, yeah, and let's see what will happen. Yeah, Good. thank you. So we, we, we've started with slightly different initial condition. And again, this would be like, you know, the difference that you really cannot like, you know, observe even like, you know, on a good plot, you really need to zoom in very closely. And if you think in terms of experiments, it's actually like, you know, would be like, you know, destroyed by any kind of noise that you have in an experimental system. So now we can see that this is actually uh, not- Sorry, I'm jumping in again. No, but no, no, just please, Krasi, yeah. I just want to add that what Piotr just said means an experiment you would never be able to pick up on stable, on stable states. We can compute them numerically, but because our real systems have various sources of noise, uh, it will be very, very difficult or impossible to observe unstable states. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. So now let's repeat the same experiment for the for the for the one of the steady states that we got here. Uh, so this is uh, this was our starting point, and as you can see here, we did it uh, at the display that doesn't have enough digits. We don't see any difference here. We pick up the last point, and we can see here that it changed to this x1 and x2 being high. So it's selected. And now just like, you know, to, to explore some of the options that we've done, we will go to the plot properties again and change it to, to red. So I will copy it into chat again. I've just checked, changed the black to red. And this is, this is how it looks now. We've picked up our initial point. We again wanted to start at zero so that this is like truly our initial condition. And now if I click compute forward, we are going here and now I can change this state, let's say to seven. Again, I've changed just the, the last, last digit here. And again, go forward. Yeah, we haven't noticed anything because we just stayed at the same. And as we've seen before, if I change it even like, you know, further away, so if I change it like, you know, somewhere here to five, it's still too close on this plot to see the difference, but we again ended up at this, at this, at this, at the very same solution. So now let's go back to the to the simulation and um, and uh, and make the jump now to the to to looking actually at the bifurcations because I think one one point of this demonstration is that like yes we can explore the whole phase plane and the changes in the phase plane and the stability just by running simulations but this is not really the effective way to do it. It's like for to, to do such phase plots for all the values of Z between 0.5 and 0.1 would be like, you know, really, really very, it would take a quite a long time and would be like, you know, quite inefficient. So the point is actually to use the bifurcation theory to understand the changes between, between the, 
the behavior of the system between the um, between these different phase planes and to have the insight into the stability of the of the steady state. One thing that you don't get that easily when you are actually looking at this at this bifurcation plots and what is going on at the at the long time, so at the end of the simulations, is that we don't actually observe this this initial part. So we don't actually see that easily what is actually happening at the very beginning. So when we are looking at the bifurcation plots, we are just really like you know focusing at this very very long end state. What is happening uh, happening here? So so um, yeah. So we are observing what what is the stable states, unstable states. What is the long term evolution of the system? So to do this, we again like you know we'll pick up our last point our stable state we select it we can now close this window we will close this window here we will uh, last before we will go we will now go to select the type we will check initial point and uh, we will select the equilibrium because we are starting from a from a steady state, so it's it's also called sometimes like an equilibrium. And we've got this information here that we have to select one free parameter. So we want to now because we are now looking at the at the how the solutions are changing depending on the parameter. So we want to like we've changed the z in between our two phase plots. We want to. We want to do. We also need to select this parameter. So we are selecting Z here, and to visualize what is going on, we are going to select at the beginning a two D plot, and in the Matcon layout, we already have like you know Matcon done some job for us. It selected the parameter to be to be to be Z. I'm just going to set the ranges here between 0 and 0 0.3 because i know that this is a good range and for the for the other vari variable i'm going to ch choose x2 because i produce all the b b yeah you can you can choose x1 it's just that if you pick up x2 it's going to you are going to produce the the, the plots that are looking like the one in the in the slides and i'm going to change again the the maximal range to four because uh this is this is the reasonable range for this variable and for the for the parameters that we set so Piotr, can you say something what do you do if you don't know what is the range for the parameter that you want to uh, so what i would do i would just run it and then uh, select it... matcont fit range to find the range for me and then for the final figure that I would produce for, for some presentation or to observe something or to share with people, I will then actually like, you know, basing it on the fit range, I will pick up, uh, uh, we, can, we can actually like, yeah, let's, let's do it this way. So I can, I can actually set here all the way to one and I can leave this at, at one. So I can leave it at the, at the default values. And then one last thing, because we want to see what is the stability information here, I will change here in this uh, in this plot here in this in this window here. You can see you have this EP. This is our our curve type because we are looking at the equilibrium points. We are going to change here because we have these two values. Here we have the default value for the EP curve, and here we have the EP value if unstable. So because MatCont is, uh, is computing the stability information for us, it's computing the eigenvalues, it can set up conditions to change the, 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 the plotting of the curve depending on the, on the stability. So I will just set it to be black and I will paste it in a second into, into chat. And then I will set it to be In, as in contrast with the black and thick lines, with blue and thick. 
So this is for unstable. And this is for stable lines. And if you have other preferences or you want to plot it in a different way, you can, you can choose different colors, different line style, different line widths. This, this input takes here all the plotting properties that are available, available in MATLAB. Okay, so we will now close this window and I will start our, our now continuation. So I will now start our bifurcation plot in Z and X2. So to do this, I will go to compute forward. And we can see that we have this point here that, that appeared and um, I lost one of the, okay, I will just start compute forward again. I will go to clear. Hi, Piotr. Yeah. So this, this error message I, I get sometimes when the, I, I don't want to get into the technical details, but when, when you suspend the computation, when it hits a branching point, it, it sometimes tries to delete a figure that's not actually there. And I find that if I just switch off the suspend computation, sorry, yeah, switch off the suspend computation under the options, then I don't get this error message anymore. Okay. If, just go to never. Never. Okay. That's what we will do then. Thank you. You're welcome. So we can see here we got like, you know, part of the curve, but we've seen that we've started at some value that was uh, at, the, at the top here. So we can go here to matcont, fit range, and uh, we can see here that the plot is looking like a quite, that's a quite strange because it's just following this, this edge here. And we see that if we have the Z value here at the very, very high values, that is not much happening on. And then I would actually like, you know, go now to layout and change. And I'm also interested in value of Z equals zero. And this is where I would set uh, Z to equal to zero and then change the maximum value to 0 0.3 because then we can see this nice curving here. And for X2, I will actually again pick up the zero because uh, this is again the value that we were looking at uh, at the end that was like, you know, to an, uh, the, the bottom of our range. And four, because we again just had this before. But you can see that like, you know, if you are not going to set it up, then if you do it afterwards, it's still, it's still working fine. And we've seen here that if we compute forward, so we started here at this point of X2 equal 2.5, and then we went this way. So we can now go compute backwards, and this will finish this line for us going in the, in the other direction. So now we have this curve and we can see that those okay, are I'm interrupting, but I, uh, I, I'm suggesting to, to spend some time explaining the backward and the forward. Uh, what is happening actually when you choose backward or forward? So if I choose forward, what the, uh, what the matcont is doing is actually like, you know, taking the starting point and is adding a tiny little bit to the starting point. So we have this init step size. So this is the initial step size. So this is like the initial change to this, to the Z parameter that the, that the computer is doing and is trying, trying to find the solution that will be that will be close to the previous solution so to the to this to this point x1 x2 uh, just by changing the z a little bit and here the forward and backward is a little bit arbitrary because as we've seen 
the first change was actually like, you know, in the, in the negative direction of Z. So then if I compute backward, it's taking again this first point, but it's then continuing it in the opposite direction to the one that we've started. Yeah, exactly. So this allows you to explore on both sides of that parameter in both plus or minus this, this step and then it goes for. So it's a, it's a very useful way to, to, to look at these, yeah, these yeah. behaviors. Thank you. And now, and now we can, we can, we can, and, and this is like, you know, useful because like usually like, you know, this, this curves that we are computing here, this equilibria, they don't, that, that in the cases that, at least especially like you know, in the case today, they are not going to end at, at a very, very sharp point. So these curves will continue for a long time. Then they can like, you know, have this, 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 this nice smooth bands and they have, might have some special points and be connecting to other curves. So, um, so it is worth to exploring when you are doing the bifurcation diagram. You, it's, it's almost like, you know, required to explore it in both backward and forward, uh, uh, backward and forward direction. And, um, and, and this is what, we, what we've done here. So now what we are going to do, we, have, we can see that, that Matcon detected this, this BP point, which is the so-called branching point, also sometimes called the pitchfork point. And we are going to see what is happening at this point by actually selecting this point. So we now need to go to this view results that you get from the control. And we can see that we have this uh, EP curve two, and this EP curve two was this curve that was computed in the other direction. So this was this curve that started here and went all the way up. And this point doesn't have any, any special points. So to get to this special point, we need to click the diagram here and pick up the first of our, of our EP, EP curves which was this, this bottom, bottom part here. And here we can select the branch point. And it's going to set up the starting points as the, uh, as, uh, as the initial point, it's going to pick up the values of this branch point. And then we actually see here that initial point also here changed to the to the to the branch point and we also have a different initializer so the mat count will know that if i ask it to start on this and it's all happened like you know by default and it is like an automatic for for like you know switching between the points it's set up in in matcon for you so you don't have to set anything else up here so the mat count will know that if i start at this point that, not, that I don't want to go along this branch up here or the branch down here. I want to explore what is happening here if I start in, 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 in other directions. So I again click Compute Forward. And we can see that this branch actually started here and we can see that it is black and thin, which means this is this unstable branch that we, that we observed also in our simulations. And again, as we said, we always want to go and see what is going on if we go backward. And as you can see, that other side of this branch point is actually stable. So now, if you just like, you know, remember that we were starting at the value 0.5, uh, of Z of uh, around 0.5, we had the single solution here and then for the value of Z around 0.1, we had the three solutions here. So let's compare actually this, this bifurcation plot again with our, with our uh, phase plots. So we have our stable equilibria that are shown here as these thick blue lines. And then we have our unstable equilibrium, which is shown as this thin black line. And we can see that this agrees with this um, with the space plots that we observed at the beginning. So for Z0.1, we had this single, single steady state. And this is like, you know, this branch here and this 
steady states were uh, were stable. So all the so all the initial conditions were uh, were attracted to this point, and then we actually have the free free equilibria free, and two of them are stable, and one is unstable. And this is what you see in what we've observed here at this other phase plot. And this is also like, you know, what was shown in this experiment that as you're increasing that, as you're increasing this, uh, this concentration of IGPT, that at some point you are no longer have like, you know, just a single solution. You actually have uh, two solutions that are, that are, that are happy, uh, appearing. But you can now ask yourself, but this is not actually a switch. So you, well, with this some switch, you have one or two, but can we actually like, you know, see what is happening or what could be changed to have, let's say, only red or only green solutions? And one way to explore it would be actually like, you know, to go with the, to do a different bifurcation plot, for example, in parameter A1. And this is like, you know, what we are going to do now. So we are going to close this 2D plot at the moment. We are just going to one thing first, which is we are going to the view results. And because we are going to be starting from the um, equilibrium points again, we are just going to change the names of these two equilibrium point branches that we computed before. So I'm clicking here. So I went to view results. And then I was here at this, uh, at this uh, curve that was the branch point equilibrium. I clicked at the diagram here. And here I'm clicking this, uh, this first branch here and I'm clicking here rename. And I'm putting it small z here just to know that this was computed when I was changing z. And now I will go again to this uh, to this initial initial orbit. So those are those are curves that are named P. And again, I'm going to pick up the last point here. And this was computed for z, uh, z equal 0.1. So we know that this is the part that had the three three solutions. And I'm going to go select this point. And again, I have to go here to the type initial type initial point equilibrium and I again will now because now I want to explore what will happen if I change other parameters I'm going to pick up a1 and as an output I want the graphical graphical output I'm going to select 2d and just to check that everything that I want uh, to be plotted is on my layout. I'm going to go to to layout, so matcont layout, and I'm going to change the parameter to be going to be a1. And I'm going to click OK here. And now again we go compute forward. And I go again to option, suspend computations, never. Option, suspend computations, never, because I have the same error as before. And uh, yeah, computation fi finished. Okay, I don't see anything on the plot, so I go to matcont, fit range, and now, yeah, I can see there is a curve here. So now I can see what I haven't changed. I haven't changed actually the range when I was setting the layout. I haven't changed the range of the parameters. They were still set as for the Z. And as we've seen, the parameter A was starting at 25. So it was for sure impossible to, to observe it. So now I've changed it to 15 and um, 45 and X to, to zero and four as before. 
and we see that we have this part of the curve here. So now what I can do, I can first extend this curve. So it's computed for, it, it's going to be, uh, so the computation in the same direction as I started it, so forward, will continue for some more points. And I can see that it started to be extended here at the bottom. These unstable solutions are happening. And we have this, this limit point, the curve turned, and then it continues towards the higher values of A1. And I will extend it a little bit further. So it goes out of the, out of the range that we are seeing here. And it's now out, but it's still being computed. So if it, if it happens and you are not interested, you can press the stop here. And now we will go in the, the other direction, compute backward, and we should see the, the line extending from the other end. So now we see like a, a, a very different picture to one that we've seen before. We don't see like, you know, a single steady state that is forking into, into a free, they have three solutions, two stable and one unstable. We are seeing that like, you know, for the low values of A1 that in this model has the interpretation of the maximum expression level, we would see only like the, the high values of X2. So we would see only one color of the, of the bacteria being, uh, one, one color of the being, being shown in the experiment. And only if this expression level A1 was increased enough, then we would see both of them. But then if we increase it even further, we again would observe only one color, but this time it would be like the, the other one. So if we had green at the top here, it would be actually like you know red at the bottom here. So if we would build in into this switch some other uh, genetic mechanism that would allow us to control it, we would be able by using this switch to actually go between the green and red. But in between, we would have this, this part where we would observe both of them. And here, like, you know, which color we would observe would really depend on the, on the, on the random effects in, in individual cells. So now one could like, you know, see, okay, so we have this, um, continuation in one parameter. We have this bifurcation plot in the two parameter in the, in the, in A1. We have this bifurcation plot in, uh, in Z. So are they in any way connected? And if you think about it, they actually, yes, they should be connected because we had the same starting point. We had like, you know, some, some x1 and x2 that have been computed for this for the same values of the parameters and had the same values so we started just at the single point and when we explored how the solutions are changing if we if we are changing the parameters in the system so to actually like you know see how does it look we will now close this window here and we will go to again to our window output and we will choose 3d again And again, we have to like, you know, just tell everything to the layout what we want to be on the axis. So on the X, I'm going to choose parameters. And yeah, it's fine to be Z. I know that interesting range of Z is 0.3. Then here we want to change the parameters and we want to check the A1 because this was this one that we were changing. And we know that it was 15 to 45. And X2 is uh, 0, 04, and that's fine. And now, if we go to matcont, 
redraw diagram, it will actually like, you know, plot all the curves that we computed in this, in this math concession. And this is like, you know, what we, what we see here. So we see here, like, you know, depending how we look at this, at this picture, we can see here, if we go to XZ, we can see that this is our bifurcation diagram in, in Z. And if we go to YZ, we see the S-shaped curve, which we, which we computed as the bifurcation diagram in NY, in A A1. And what we see here is that we see these unstable solutions that are existing here. And, and you can imagine that this is like, you know, like looking at the slices of all this possible combination of A1 and Z. And so this is like, you know, if we look at the, from the top, we see here that we chosen like, you know, first the one value of A1 and we see how things are changing. And then we looked at one value and then we fixed the value of, of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Z and we look how things are changing when we are actually looking at the change in an A1. So here we fix the value uh, of A1 and looked how the things were changing in Z. So now we see that there is this region where the things are bistable. So actually what, the, what MATCONT allows you to do in a, in a most advanced way is to look actually at the, at the bifurcation curves in these two, two parameters. So in a way, we can, look at the com we can look at the combination of Z and A1 to really observe how, where this region of the, of the two solutions coexisting uh, is in this, in this parameter space. So now we go again to view results and we change, change to, to, to the curve that had, for example, the limit points. Uh, this one. So the one that had the two limit points here. We select it and we, for example, pick up the first limit point. We pick it up, we click on to select, and now things changed here because the starter window tells you that to continue such limit point, which we know from this plot is at the boundary of this region of the bistability, you need to check to, you need to select two free parameters. And we know already which parameters we are interested in. We want to see how it, how it behaves if we look at Z, Z and A1. So I'm clicking Z here. So now, just to make things a little bit clearer, I will go to mat, uh, matcon plot properties. And now, because I know that the curve type is LP, so just to make it like a more visible, I will change it to red. And I also, I'm going to make it thick so it is really like, you know, clearly visible on the plot. So the parameters I'm putting there are like this. And now what we do, we just like, you know, like before we click compute forward. And we can see that there is this red curve starting here at this LP point. It is now continuing to our branching point that was the beginning of the, of the region where we observed the bite stability and is now continuing outside of the, of the range of the, of the, that we've selected for A1 and Z. So again, we are now just going to, uh, let me just see here in X and Y. So we see here that it hit the boundary, so we don't need to extend it in this way. So we now go compute and we ask to compute it backwards, so in the other direction. And we again see that it hit this boundary here. 
so we can see that all these points that were like you know showing us that this uh, that the picture of how many points are uh, how many equilibria how many of the steady states are existing here are connected by this curve of this point so you can imagine that if you change a z a little bit this curve would shift a little bit here it still would have two limit points these two limit points would lie on this red curve and this this whole s shape let's go here this this s shape here would just become a little bit smaller so now just to make the things a little bit clearer on the on the plot i'm going to clear it so matt can clear clear cleared everything out and we go to just withdraw the last curve that we computed so this is the boundary between the bistable and uh, and uh, region so where we had two three solutions and the region where we only had a single solution and and it actually just computed this last bit here so do i remember how to plot all of them no i will just redraw the full diagram so it should plot everything else so you would need to go to through probably through view results and load curve and uh, and then just select the second part of the curve but just uh, to like, no, talk sorry, a little sorry, bit about sorry uh, can't you uh, can't you uh, click on the on some of these curves and just delete them? Yeah. From the graph? Yeah. That's also like so. I'm just clicking on it. So I selected here this arrow at the edit plot on the on at the MATLAB window, and I'm just going here to not like this and go to delete. Uh, Zoe says she redid it by just doing compute extent again. But okay, yeah, that's that's per perfectly uh, fine. Probably, yeah, that's yeah. a perfectly fine uh, approach as well. You can just recompute the. You can you can just recompute the curve, and we go to delete here as well. So now you can see that we have the plot that is just a one and and z, and. Um, is there anyone who would be brave enough to try to interpret this plot? So at this region, we have this A1 that can be interpreted as the maximum expression level. And here we have the Z, which was this concentration or the, of, this, uh, of this IGPT that was uh, inducing the that was inducing the concentrations. So what this plot tells you that depending on the value of A1, the switch to two solutions is going to appear at a different concentration of Z. So for example, if one, if one of, uh, of, the, of the genes had much higher maximum expression levels, so for example, somewhere here, 45, you would really need like you know almost twice as high um level of the igpt to observe the switch to the two solutions so such a two parameter bifurcation diagrams give you like a map that can guide your experiments and explain why for some combination of the of the of, of the parameters of the systems you are observing one behavior and not the other and how this dependence actually changes and i guess that's that's it for today so i will now go to just to to some quick conclusions so we looked at we used matcont to to investigate the multistability in this genetic switch model we've done it first by running the simulations and seeing how you can go from initial conditions and look what are the steady states of the system. 
we then compared how this time evolution and phase plane are providing similar information and how they are uh, they are like complementary to each other then we looked actually what does it actually mean that the things are stable and unstable so if they're unstable just a tiny change in the in the state will will kick it out from this from this from the values and finally we looked at how to compute the bifurcation diagrams to make this analysis in a much more much more efficient way and at the next session you will see a different way of modeling but uh, which is also concerning by stability and in mathematical way is quite connected to what we've done today thank you very much and uh, yeah happy to answer any questions yeah it's great we have 10 minutes for questions so if anybody wants to ask so there is a, in the chat now there's a question do we have to so, start from limit point to do a two parameter bifurcation analysis that's a good question yeah and we can also like um and we can also like you know if you if you prefer like you know just to have a little bit more social event we can all switch the cameras or like you know who's comfortable switching cameras and have it more like as a as a chat okay i'll start by switching so do you have to start from a limit point to do a two parameter bifurcation analysis so to do a two bifurcation parameter analysis yes you have to start from a point at which things are changing yeah, I have to start at the special point, in other you words. Have to, you have to start from special points because uh, these special points are defined in a mathematical way that they are depending on, uh, on, two, on two parameters. So if you observed before, as we are con running the continuation from equilibrium, the matcont was always asking you to select a, a single parameter to continue the system. And if I, let's say, for example, go here and switch to, win, uh, to type initial point equilibrium, it, it, the starter is complaining, actually, that I selected two parameters. So yes, so to do a two-parameter bifurcation, you have to find the special points first, and then you can, you can continue from them. They don't have to be the limit points. They can be like the cop points, like we've seen at the previous session, but, but you have to start from special points. Why didn't you start from the branching point, Piotr? Uh, no, and there is no particular reason. No, did you try? Did you try? Uh, no, I haven't tried. I'm not I sure just... if Matcon can handle it. It's I not can, well, we can, we, can, we can run this experiment very quickly. I will go to view results. And actually, actually there is one more there is one more curve in this plane which belongs to the branching point or the pitchfork the question is whether matcont will show it to us so i can pick up this branch point here yes and um, uh, okay i can i can choose this curve i can pick up the branch point select point and now it is like actually going and asking to be like the equilibrium. So I can try to go to curve. And I'm not sure branch point, branch point. So I have this option here and I have branch point to limit point. So I can go with the branch point and branch point. And as you can see, because this branch point is actually like a much more special because this is actually the point where there are two limit points that are like you know colliding you have to select the three parameters mm -hmm. to see how it's changing here in the in the starter uh yeah do you want to do you want to just uh, mentioned very quickly about uh, parameter bounds or, or, the, or the lack of them in MatCon, um, just as a connection between the real world experiments and, and these numerical simulations. Oh, yes. So one thing, so if I go here to redraw the diagram, uh, yeah, it's not going to work this way. 
so because I've selected some other curves and it's complaining. So yes, so one thing is that like there is no limits on this on these parameters here in Matcond or in on a, any other like let's say mathematical tools. There are no hard hard bounds on this on these limits. So this is for example why I was always like you know setting it by hand to be like a to z being equal to zero because for Matcond it doesn't matter if the concentration goes negative. We know that you cannot interpret it really like, you know, in a reasonable biological way, but it doesn't matter from the point of view of the equations. So the Matcon would continue this curve to the, to, the, to the negative Z completely happily. And the same with the values of X1 and X2. They could easily go into the, into the negative values and that would, be, that would be like, you know, again, something that we cannot interpret. And this is like, you know, up to the user, up to someone who's analyzing the system to think about what are the limits of the parameters, what are the limits of the, of the state variables that are, that are reasonable, that are interpretable in terms of the experiments or that are interpretable in some, in some physical, physical manner. Thank you, Carl, good question. Yeah, great explanation, Piotr. Mm, great question from Jen there in the chat. <laughs> so the first thing is to ask, has someone already developed the equations for such a model and maybe, maybe validated it? If not, it is usually like, you know, the starting point would be to, to look at some, some examples of the equations that have been developed for, for oscillators. So like Kyle was showing here, uh, for for chemical equations, you are starting you are starting from the from the stoichiometric notation, and then you go towards the, the the differential equations. So here, in the seminal manner, we would start from the from the from physics. So from the equations of motions and from from the from the Newton's uh, from the Newton's law, and then we would build it build it step by step. And then we would first look at what are the stable steady state, stable solutions. And this quite often can be computed for like the simpler systems um, analytically or, or numerically, but you can really see how many, how many solutions they are. And then we could start explore the bifurcations of this, of the steady states. But then the important, important thing would be actually like, you know, the validation of the model that we build in experiments. So in a way, making predictions and observing that what you, what you see in the model is then actually happening in the reality. Does it, does it help at all? Okay, I think that's a good time to finish and, and see many of you next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Piotr. That's great.